I had the great pleasure of listening and uh, observing this talk uh, hosted by Newport Historical Society some months ago. And on that night, I introduced myself to our sp speaker tonight, Michael Cusick, and asked him would he do us the honour of repeating his talk, uh, or a shortened version of it, here tonight. Because I felt for Covey Week, uh, which is held every two years, it's always, uh, it's the last week in July every two years, we celebrate Westport's culture, heritage, history, and characters. And part of our culture, of course, for very significantly, is the Crow Patrick pilgrimage. And today, as most of you would know, is Garland Friday, the day of the traditional pilgrimage. So I felt it would be appropriate to have this illustra illustration talk on this uh, traditional evening associated with Crow Patrick. Now, uh, I'm going to ask Michael to, to come on stage and uh, I'll get, give a brief introduction of, of this man uh, who, whose roots are, are very much in the Covey land. He, he's the grandson of the late Peter Hopkins of Ross Beg, uh, whose family operated the famous Sheebeen pub for many, many decades. And Pete, the late Peter Hopkins was uh, one of the very last uh, professional commercial uh, marine pilots operating in Westport Bay, bringing up ships into Westport Quay when there was an active commercial life at Westport Quay. And uh, uh, Michael's uh, Michael's uh, grandmother was the famous Agnes Hopkins, who was, uh, I, I'm glad to say I, bo I knew both Michael's grandfather, Peter, and his grandmother, Agnes, who was an outstanding community figure here in Westport. She was, I, I, I'm almost certain she was one of the founders of the Westport branch of the Irish Country Women's Association, but she was an active, lady in all spheres of community life gave tremendous service to this community and michael's mother uh, geraldine uh, i'm not sure is she here tonight she's here, yeah. yes, she's here. <laughs> this this sprightly looking lady <laughs> in the second row here is a remarkable 98 years old <laughs> Frankly, uh, she put me to shame at the moment, her agility uh, and, and her intellect. In, in recent years, she wrote a book, uh, the, Night, the Nightingale Sang, is it, sure? Yeah, about her life in England with the British forces. She served with two local ladies uh, from Westport, the Meoch sisters. Uh, older residents of Westport would remember that there was a famous bakery at a time when Westport had many, many bakeries. Uh, but there was a, a bakery where the old credit union office uh, was until it moved to the former Bank of Ireland. And where now, since today, I believe, there's a new business there now. Dermot Langan and his wife Jane have opened up Wild Atlantic Weir special t-shirt printing uh, service. Uh, but anyway, um, Ger served with the two Meoch sisters, who were nurses, I believe, Ger. Well, in the army, actually. Yeah, the and are. Ger's book is, is still available, but becoming a collector's item, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's available in, in the local book shops. Um, in addition to all of that, this remarkable lady has a huge talent as an amateur artist. And virtually every day, she spends some time at Reason. 
Amazing, amazing, and uh, I've seen her work. Beautiful. <laughs> to, get to the main mansion out, Michael. Uh, he, he has a Hagola connection. Ger Geraldine's husband, John uh, Cusick, was a brother of Con Cusick of Casabar Street and Father Andrews Park, a man who dedicated a huge portion of his life to the promotion of soccer with Westport United and Westport. Michael himself here has first climbed Crow Patrick at the age of six and has since enjoyed over 100 ascents of the mountain. He has led multi-week cycling and hiking tours in both Europe and the United States and has lived and worked in several countries including Saudi Arabia, France, England, Austria, and the United States. His travel experience has included several treks in the Everest uh, regions of Nepal, as well as Mount Kilimanjaro, and um, some of the highest peaks in Australia. He's a former Irish cycling squad member. He raced extensively in Europe and the USA, and his family have lived in the West Virginia area for generations. His grandfather, as I said, being Peter Hopkins, was one of the last Crew Bay pilots. Michael now uh, is back living in, in he, the area of his roots, lives out of the canvey, and he operates as a little company called Reed Tours in the Westport area. And if you, if you want to really get a feel of the area, the Cropatic and Crew Bay, uh, check out Reed Tours, and Michael will be delighted to facilitate you. <laughs> so, without any further ado, I hand you over to Michael Cusick. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Martin. I don't think I can live up to everything Martin just said about everybody, but um, in any event, uh, I appreciate Martin Curry and Liam McNally and the Westport Town Hall for inviting me here tonight to talk as part of Covey Week. And hopefully for the next hour or so, we can entertain you with some stories of Crowpatrick and Clue Bay, as well as some great local music and poetry. So when you look out into Clue Bay uh, today, you're really looking at the, what could be called the edge of Europe, and some would call it the edge of the world. It's an area that's rich in history and geography, and has many great legends, including the prehistoric discoveries, the Bohistan, the existence of the tribal myths like the Tua de Ganon, Grace O'Malley, the Pirate Queen, the wrecks of the Spanish Armada, the Tower Porrick, or St. Patrick's Causeway, the legend of mysterious Baba the Reek, uh, the 365 islands of the bay, John Lennon's island of Derinch, and the gold mining on the Reek that Martin alluded to, as well as some legends of Danish or Viking treasure that are hidden on the islands. Clue Bay and Crowpatrick has all this, and it's certainly a story worth telling. So I think Martin has already covered most of my inspirations for the book, certainly the fact that my family have lived in the Westport gener for generations, uh, and my great-grandfather Patrick Hopkins was actually an Admiralty pilot for the west coast of Ireland. And also, as Martin mentioned, my grandfather Peter Hopkins of Ross Beg was one of the last pilots of Clue Bay. My mother, Geraldine Hopkins, uh, pictured on the right here, has already been introduced. Hello, Mum. And last but not least, my late uncle, Paddy Hopkins, a great inspiration and a terrific advocate for Westport. All of these have been inspirations for me when I came back from America after 30 years and decided to spend a year researching and writing this book. So just some general information about Clue Bay. The Irish name for Clue Bay is Cúin Moda, and it's believed that Moda was a pagan chieftain who laid claim to many of the islands in the bay. But one of the questions I'm often asked is, well, where did the word clue come from? And until I gave the talk to the Newport Historical Society, I 
used to respond, I really don't have a clue. <laughs> and it was uh, a gentleman named John McGovern who was at that meeting who put forward the actual plausible theory that the name Clue comes from the Roman. Uh, C as in 100, L 50, probably an X uh, for 10 and V for 5. So whomever decided on the name at the time may have counted 165 islands, uh, which actually makes sense as you'll see. So the majority of islands in the bay are drumlands formed at the end of the last ice age. Uh, the sea levels in the bay rise about three meters or t around 10 feet on a typical tide. And Clue Bay has the largest shingle reserves in Ireland, which anyone who's sailed out on the bay can attest to. From a geological perspective, the Neffen Mountains on the northern side of the bay are about 700 million years old, these quartzite peaks. Uh, but the southern side of the bay, as you all know, is dominated by uh, Crowpatrick, which is about 300 million years younger. Uh, it's a Silurian quartzite peak formed about 400 million years ago. However, the uh, sort of the, the oldest rocks in the bay are actually found on the western side of Clare Island, and they're estimated to be around 1,000 million years old. So to give some perspective on how the bay was formed, uh, the Ice Age uh, ended about 12,000 years ago. And at that point, it, was, it is believed that it was around 700 meters thick, which means that it was actually higher than the shoulder of Crowpatrick. And there's evidence on both the east and west sides of the reek of the retreat of the ice from the mountain. The ice carved out these Kari lakes and mountain cirques. And this picture here, some of you will recognize, is an area of the reek on the east side called Lugnadema, the hollow of the serpents. And it's also associated with the story that St. Patrick uh, cast the snakes out of Ireland into Lugnadema. So when the ice retreated, it left what are called a swarm of drumlands. And there are a couple of theories on how the drumlands formed. But basically, the ice scraped the earth into these whale-shaped uh, west-to-east uh, configurations and uh, left what is known as a swarm. As the ice melted, uh, the bay was inundated with water and left these drowned drumlins and semi-drowned drumlins, such as Ilan Roo, which is pictured here on a misty morning. So the visible remnants of all of that are now the islands of Clue Bay. Just to touch on the archaeology, I know there are people in this room who know a great deal about that, but uh, just a few points. Um, the area on Clue Bay has a lot of archaeological features. Uh, between Westport and Mulrani, uh, over a hundred uh, prehistoric monuments and artifacts have been identified. This particular picture is of Kildangan uh, out on the Murrisk side of the bay. Uh, these are four stones that still stand today. There's a fifth that has fallen down. But it's basically on the winter solstice at 1.50 p.m. on December 21st, these four stones will align with the left-hand shoulder of the reek precisely. It's not entirely known why all of this uh, trouble was taken by our ancestors, but it is known that they were astronomically very astute. Uh, the area around Westport itself has standing stones, megalithic tombs, stone circles, Philoctophia, the uh, cooking pits, which some believe were used for alcohol brewing, and this cashel, which is on the Lean Ann Road, uh, just off the Lean Ann Road outside Westport. Of course, the Bowie Stone uh, rock art outside Westport was carved at least 6,000 years ago and is considered to be one of the finest examples of rock art in the Western Hemisphere. Aylmore, a megalithic court tomb uh, found outside Lewisburg, is also about 6,000 years old. And of course, the Clue Bay Archaeological Trail, if any of you have followed it, highlights a lot of these ancient sites. So Clue Bay is a curious kind of mixture of fact and myth intertwined. The first inhabitants are believed to have come here about 6,000 BC. And legend has it that the two of they don and invaded Clue Bay and overthrew the resident Firbolox. And after the Milesians arrived from Hispania, 
It is stated in Alfred Knox's book, The History of Mayo, that the chief races of Ireland were brought together at Murrisk. So it could be argued that Murrisk uh, was the cradle of Irish civilization. The Bronze Age began in Ireland about 2000 BC, and the Celts arrived about 1400 years later. And the Celts brought with them the desire to exploit what they knew of as an area that contained gold. Uh, in fact, the Owen Ree River, the Owen Bui, of course, is named as the Yellow River or the Golden River. And so it is you know, a known fact that these uh, ancestor vows were aware of the existence of gold in the area. And about a thousand years after the Celts, St. Patrick brought Christianity uh, to the area in the fifth century. Just uh, to touch on the industry, of course, there are two main ports in this area. Westport and Newport. Westport was, harbour was established as a centre for the Herring Fleet around 1780. Uh, and the port did benefit from the Napoleonic Wars, uh, including exports of uh, wool, hides, tallow, and timber. And uh, Westport Quay actually took its initial shape uh, from the um, chalk that was used as ballast that came in on the ships. Uh, this is an old picture that I got from uh, the Westport photos online of the Bath Hotel, which <laughs> several of you will remember. And then, of course, huge warehouses were built at the quay uh, that were later used as workhouses during the famine and have now been converted into hotel rooms and apartments. Uh, this is a line drawing from an English paper in uh, 1870, which bemoaned the empty warehouses and the lack of industry at the quay. And indeed, the key had gone into decline uh, at that time, and the use of the port gradually declined. And obviously, today, the channel in the port is, is no longer dredged. You don't have the bigger ships coming in, but it's uh, certainly prospering, uh, prospering as, a, uh, as a leisure.